Lewis Murphy's boys. You're not going to believe. This is the third time I recorded this video. The first time, my microphone cord was bumping the mic, and it was making this boom, boom, boom when I was talking. I didn't like that. The second time I recorded the video, the microphone was disconnected. I was like, son of a gun. Now, I could have just used the second video and narrated over it, but I couldn't do that. Like, I'm literally just doing this hands-on, and I'm talking off the top of my head. So this is video is basic watt meter use. This is targeted towards, you know, the guys that are running lower power, not the competition guys, not guys that are looking to go into business for themselves. This is just for, you know, the Joe six-pack, common six... Uh, CB radio operator that just needs something to triage the radio. And the other thing, I should have did, sorry fellas, boy, I need some hand lotion, huh? Look at those, look at that alligator skin. Holy smokes. And one of these little 50 watt rated watt meters, or dummy loans, I'm sorry. Um, these are very helpful. Um, you can put this on the back of your radio. It'll show a one-to-one -one SWR. It's just a dummy load. Um, in a mobile setting, if you had a high SWR, a lot of CB antennas are using the um, UHF connector. You could thread this down onto your antenna mount. If you read one-to-one, -one, you probably have an antenna issue. If you are still reading infinity on this meter, scoot that for a little bit. Um, you probably have a cable issue or a connector issue or something with your mount. So having something like this and something like this are very valuable. For the basic operator, you know, running, you know, say 4 watt dead key, 10 watt dead key, you know, 25 watt dead key, whatever. This radio will do 10 watts on this scale, so basically it's one two, can you see? there we go, let's see you guys can see that. So if you're on the two, it's two watts, four, four watts, so on and so forth. When you go down to the 100 watt scale, it just changes from one would be 10 watts. Here, let's do this. Hopefully I don't mess with the focus too much. But the the two would be two, uh, 20 watts, four would be 40 watts, and obviously 10 would be 100 watts. When we on the SWR setting, you put it on forward to calibrate it, and then reflected to actually read the SWR, which would be down here. Um, you know, we're shooting for anything below a two. Ideally, I like to be one and a half and below, but if you're a little above it, it's not great, but you're probably not going to blow anything up at these power levels. So, um, let me just screw this back on to the watt meter so you can kind of so some things I want to point out the motivation for this video was I overheard a live feed some fellows out in the west coast and this isn't to put anybody down there's a lot of confusion because I don't know why in the CB world everyone wants to advertise the big number which is usually the peak envelope power guy had some sort of connex probably rated for, I looked it up, it was a 40 watt PEP radio, peak envelope power, and he was disappointed. He was actually using this very meter, and he says, oh man, I'm only getting 10 watts. And the other guy, they, they weren't putting down the, tech, the, the shop that sold to him, they're like, this guy said it was doing 40 watts, and he says, I'm only hitting about 12 to 14 watts, when he was whistling into it, and they were kind of like, oh man. Meanwhile, he was doing exactly what he should have been doing. These meters read average power or dead key. So a lot of times in the instructions when you do your SWR or you check your dead key, they tell you to turn your mic gain down so you're not tickling the meter like I just did there. So this radio here, I think it does about 3 watts with the RF power all the way up. Let's see. Oh, helps me put it on the 10 watt scale. Let's turn off the Roger beep. We don't need that on. So, 
Yeah, I'd say it's about three watts, right? Which for a FCC legal radio. Now people might go, oh man, you know, if this meter was reading two, and say it's a, a watt inaccurate. Okay, guys, the receiving station's not going to notice that one watt of difference. You'd have to go to 100 watts for that receiving station. You'd have to put a 100 watt dead key out for that receiving station to hear something. If you were to go to 200 watts, the receiving station wouldn't even notice. If you went to 1,000 watts, the receiving station would notice. Your first 10 dB makes all the difference. I don't remember off the top of my head what it equates to in S meter movement. So to keep that in mind, let's not get too wrapped around the axle of being a watt, a watt off or something. All we really want to know, and I even think I showed, uh, if I showed, oh yeah, relative power. All I really want to know does this meter swing to about where it should be with what this radio is advertised to do? If it doesn't, this meter did its job. There's a problem with my radio. And what we'll see here is if I, you see it, it moves a little bit. That's because it's reading average power. And as I modulate, right, it's, it's not going to show 12 watts. And, and for the sake of this video, let's turn this mic gain down. Yeah, so it's, it's about 3 watts. So that means it's doing at 100% modulation, going by the 4 to 1 number, right? So what that means is 4 to 1, that means at 3 watts, at 100% modulation, we are doing 12 watts PEP. And I know, like I said, before the backyard engineers jump on me, for our basic guy just getting into the hobby with a limited amount of resources, as long as the receiving station or the buddy that's helped me says, yeah, you know, you sound loud enough, I hear you, you're probably somewhere in the ballpark of 100% modulation. So if I'm seeing 3 watts, it's a pretty good indication without having a PEP meter, I'm probably doing about 12 watts PEP, right? So that guy that I heard in the West Coast, his radio was just fine. And I commented on the video and told them that. It was much to their relief. So let's remember, right? If you got a radio that's advertised on the package as 40 watts PEP, it should be doing about four, 10 watts of average power if the radio is modulated to 100%. Without us having an O scope or some sort of modulation meter, and I would avoid the the peak meter. If if you want to spend money to get a, a true PEP meter, you're probably gonna have to spend about 200 bucks. You might be able to find one on Facebook, but if someone's trying to tell you sell you a meter that says this PEP, it doesn't have a battery in it. So the way the PEP meter works is the battery it has a circuit in it, and it's it's sampling those peaks as you speak. And it'll give you a nice steady reading like that as you speak, right? Some someone's trying to sell you a meter, they say like like they, they do this thing called peak watts. All those meters that are doing that sam that say peak watts, it's just sampling the highs. This meter, where it reads average watts, it's trying to take an average as you speak from your four watt dead key, or excuse me, your three watt dead key to your 12 watt peak, right? That's all it's trying to do. It's trying to give you an average. And that's where you see this, you know, oh, oh you see a little, oh, I turned my mic gain down. Here we go. Test, one, two, one, two. So these meters have a use. They're cheap. They're like 20 bucks. The dummy load was like 20 bucks. I got it on Amazon. Some people don't like Amazon, but, you know, like I said, for some guy out in the middle of nowhere, that might be his only option. I was told locally there's a truck stop around here that sells this stuff. I'll have to check that out. Um, but like I said, this is a good little piece of equipment for an operator to have to triage his radio, to know is my... So without an oscope, without a modulation meter, knowing that I'm getting reports and I know that my radio is modulating, people are saying, yeah, you're, you're, you're reasonably loud. 
we're probably somewhere around 100% or more, right? Someone says, God, I can barely hear you. You're probably not modulating to 100%. But, but just by based on that, right? I'm just, like I said, I'm talking triage here. I'm not talking going to the business here stuff. I'm not talking about opening a laboratory. I'm just talking about basic, you know, triage. Okay, I know I'm modulating, right? I'm reading three watts on the radio. I'm hitting 12 watts PEP. I could go hook it up to my O-scope here on the other end of the room. That's a whole different video. And I could demonstrate that. Or I could hook it up to my, PEP, my true PEP meter that uses a battery. So let's not, these meters that read peak power, just forget it. Average power, four to one. I have a, gal, uh, a Ranger 2995. It's rated for um, 150 watts PEP. And this is what kills me. Is this, you'll see this on the export radios, that, you know, the no-no radios on the CV band. They'll let you wind the RF power up to 60 watts. So we know going by four to one, that would mean that's what, 240 watts? The radio won't do it. I don't care what CB shop is telling you they're gonna get 240 watts PEP. If you're getting 240 watts PEP without changing out components in the amp section, your radio's not gonna do 240 watts PEP for very long. The engineers don't design a radio and say it'll do 150 watts PEP and really just have another, you know, 140 watts that they're just hiding inside of the radio um, just excuse me not 140 they're not hiding another 100 watts in the radio right that is just there and some CB shop in Kalamazoo Michigan they're just gonna tap into that for you it's not happening guys so I could turn my radio up to a 60 watt dead key and everyone's gonna tell me I sound like ass so going back to the four to one thing, what we know, right? What do we just talk about? If my radio should be doing 150 watts PEP, that means that at a minimum, I gotta be running 37 and a half watts, right? Probably realistically to make my life easier, I'm gonna run it at 30 watts to give myself a little bit of headroom. And people will notice that. You back it down and they'll hear that swing, right? And I'm not real hung up on swing, but people will say, yeah, you sound a little louder. And what that is is that it's that it's you modulating from 30 watts to 150 watts PP that they're hearing, right? They're hearing that. The KL203 that's real popular, I think they say that that thing's capable of 100 watts. That's just 100 watts PEP. So if you're using this meter, right, to set up this radio, and they tell you no more in a watt drive, right? You're gonna put this amp between the radio, or you're gonna put this, excuse me, this meter between the radio and your amp. You're gonna set this for a one watt dead key. Then you're gonna move this meter to the back side of the amp, the output of the amp. You should probably see about 20 to 25 watt average power. Now, you can turn up your drive and do all these things and that that KL203 will do more it just won't do more for very long so guys I've been t I don't do scripts with this stuff I just talk off the top of my head I'm gonna listen to this video hopefully I haven't rambled um, if I like it I'll I'm gonna publish it if you guys have questions about this topic but like I said this is for the average operator to triage their radio this is not for the guy who's gonna go into business selling tunes this is just for you to be a little bit more self-sufficient uh, with your equipment. But I hear this all the time. Guy will get an amp, first thing they do is they wind everything up, and they go, it sounds like shit. And then they can't understand. They can't understand, why does it sound like shit, right? They don't, I think people see that big number, and they think, you know, you, they think they should see that, and they're trying to use a meter like this. This meter doesn't read PEP. This meter doesn't read PEP. You could set up your amp if you had a PEP meter, but a lot of people go out and buy these because they're cheap. That's fine. You're just getting started out in the hobby. Maybe you're not, you know, why go out and spend a grand on equipment? I mean, you talk about this radio, I think it's like 200 bucks, 20 bucks. I think these are like 20 bucks, you know. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. Don't let someone talk you out of getting one of these. I have one. 
it's great. You can throw it in your pocket. You got to go troubleshoot your buddy's mobile. Hey, come over to the house. You know, we'll have some pizza and we'll troubleshoot your radio. I'll throw that. I have no shame throwing that in my pocket and checking some guy's setup out with that. If I, I have other equipment if I need to drill down. So anyways, hopefully this third attempt works. So this is Radio Man. I'm off the key. Thank you. So guys, I know... Let me get this microphone here. I know I said uh, I was off the key, but I forgot to add one thing. SWR on this. So... Um, how, how, to, how to do this function on this meter. Um, one of the things you have to do is calibrate the meter for the amount of power that you're running. So right now we're at 3 watts. Okay. So to read SWR we have to set the calibrate function. So first thing we do is we put it in SWR and then we leave in FWD to calibrate it. Oh set that to the set mark. The other thing is make sure your mic gain's down so that as you're speaking or if you tap the mic it doesn't affect it. So now we want to read the SWR which should be not very exciting because we have a dummy load on the back. We're going to put it down in the reflected section leave it on SWR. Nothing. Chances are on a live antenna you, you're going to see a little bit of deflection but remember you don't read SWR while you're modulating. That's why they tell you to turn the mic gain down because you calibrate for the amount of power you're running. When you're speaking, as we know, when you're forward swinging, as they say, you're increasing the amount of watts. So you don't read SWR while you're talking. I mean, you can. It's just not as accurate because you have to recalibrate. You know, if you go to one watt, you want to see your SWR at one watt, you have to recalibrate. You go to two watts or ten watts or whatever, you have to recalibrate. So I just wanted to add that part into the video. Uh, so this time I am going off the key again. Thank you.